we're going to be doing a watercolour demo. It's going to be quite loose and free. Um, and a lot of wet and wet, but also a little bit of kind of control, dry, watery, wishy-washy kind of technical stuff, obviously. Um, now, because this is quite loose and wet and wet, I've gone for a big piece of paper. I've got a piece of A3 300 GSM watercolour paper, okay, my pad. Um, I've got my reference image up here, who is, she says, opening up the reference image by Stein Eagle. Um, Lee Land, beautiful picture. So that's going to be our inspiration. Now, with this style, remember it's an inspiration, it's not about an identical copy. Um, then I've got a mixture of brushes. Having a big brush like this, this is a natural hair, which means it'll hold the water for a longer period of time, is really very handy. I highly recommend that you get one if you don't have one. Um, I've got a little tin here of water water clean water so you see it's nice and big i can dip all my brushes in real quick real easy i've got a water spray bottle as well and then i've got my colors over here so for the colors i've got my indigo my ultramarine my cobalt or my blue section then i've got a Payne's gray which is good for some darker areas because you can see this strange atmospheric kind of mist coming off the sea i've got a cadmium red and that's going to be for this like plummy lilac key shade that you get around here. Then I've got a light brown, light brown, light red, it's that kind of shade. I've got a burnt sienna and a burnt umber and then I finish off with a little bit of yellow ochre. Um, I also have a tissue which I really would highly recommend you're going to need in this technique. Now before we get started on any painting, and I move my brush that way, I've got a mixture of different brushes there obviously, as always. I have quickly just checked out the aspect ratio. Now for this to be an A3 piece of paper, this one's a little bit more um, squat that way. So I've taken off about an inch and a half off the top, okay? Make sure that I get that correct. I've used a ruler. I've also drafted in a horizon line just to make sure that I get a big enough sky because with this one, um, I was looking at doing it and I kept lifting the land up because there's so much land detail. You get pulled into this lifting the land up and making it bigger in the foreground, which you don't really want. You want it all to be about the drama of the sky and those mountains in the background. So I would recommend probably putting in a horizon line. Just pencil using a ruler. Now, this is going to be about using gravity to pull paint around the surface. My drawing board is nice and flat, but it means I'm going to have to be picking up my sketchbook and tilting it all around over the place to use gravity to get that flow of the pigment. So keep that in mind. You do not want to be putting this colour on while the sketchbook is at an angle. You want to put it on, then angle it so that you can control what's running into where. All makes complete sense. The other thing that I've done that's kind of unusual is I've got this like metal tray from um, cooking the chicken. I've cut out the base, no expense spared as always, and I've just tacked my paints into place so that I can get my brush and I can run it through and I don't pick up the colour next to it. You can see I've spaced them out. If I had that in a normal studio set, you'd be picking up other blues and it'll cause a lot of cross-contamination with your colour mixing. So I would recommend taking your little pans, if you're working with pans, and sticking them onto a tray to give you a bit more space. If you're using tubed watercolours, then you can obviously tube it out with the space in between. It makes your life a lot easier. Right, so without much ado, let's get on with things, shall we? Now for this sky section, what's going to happen is I'm going to grab some of the water and I'm going to, first of all, put a band down of clean wet water then under that another band of clean wet water and another band i reckon probably with a width of my brush i'll get about three bands then for this bit down here i'm going to just quickly do a squish brush a squash okay sounds like something out of a tennis match along the bottom and that will mean that the paint kind of stays more in place along this bottom section so that will then lead us to the rocks and the rocks will be done dry and then we'll use some water to pull it out and pull it around. Easy. Easy I hear you all say. <laughs> right, so let's dip our large brush in some water. Make sure that your brush is clean, make sure your paper is clean, you're going to get cross contamination if it's not. Okay, and then brush across your band 
of water. So you can see I'm going back and forth to make sure that I'm getting a nice even spread of water. With this you need a good quantity of water. The quality of your watercolour paper will really play to your advantage. If your watercolour paper is poor quality it means that the water will dry out far quicker than you want it to and you will find there be, well, there will be problems with bringing in um, bing, there you go, swish them up across there, other colours. Now the wetter this is, the more the colour is going to slightly dilute and become lighter and the more it's going to move. So we're kind of timing it through. It depends on the environment that you're working in. Today is a super hot day. So oh, um, it's probably going to dry quicker than I anticipate. You can see already my gluing job with that is working delightfully. So a little bit of yellow ochre. Because um, I can see like I've got this lovely yellow up here. Okay, um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my cadmium red make it kind of it's going to be i want a pinky plum in some of these cloud sections so i need the red down so that it mixes with my blue but obviously i want to keep some of that yellow and then i'm just going to grab a little bit of water i'm going to grab a little bit of cobalt and this is where i was saying to you about the blue and the red mixing on the surface i'm going to run my brush through Try and get a decent quantity of that blue for that upper cloud sky section. Alright, so now I've got that blue. I'm going to grab my book and I'm going to just kind of use the gravity to pull the colours into one another a little bit. So I'm getting a nice even blend. Now the trick is being a bit patient, letting the colours just bleed into one another. And then while that's going, I'm going to introduce a little bit of ultramarine blue. where it gets a little bit more atmospheric in the upper cloud section. Okay, let's just give that a little bit of a run. Be very careful. How much you tilt this depends a great deal on how much water you've got on the surface of your paper. Then let's pick up a little bit more water. And I'm going to grab some of that indigo. Let's work my brush through that. Now the indigo is pretty strong stuff. So be careful when you're putting it on. Alright, a little bit just along the bottom. Because I've got, can you see those kind of background? No, that's a little bit too much, it won't matter, it'll just work itself out. And you can see the kind of shapes that I'm going to put down, it's dripping water all over. Work a little bit more up. Okay. And I'm going to just flatten that off. And what you can do, so there's two different ways of doing this. You can take a brush, if you want to. It does need to be a fairly dry brush. And you can start lifting off areas. So anywhere that you might say that it's a little bit lighter and you want the pigment to be softer, you can take that brush around and lift it off. So it's quite handy where you've got the softer clouds. Now when you're using the brush to lift it off, 
you will find that it doesn't lift off everything it won't go back to the white of the paper it'll just slightly take off the excess that's there and you'll get a, quite a soft edge and keep the brush marks fairly loose and work into them and then you can still keep tilting the watercolours and controlling it while it's drying so you get a few different tones of blade around here now if you want to take up a little bit more you need to get some kitchen roll now I've only got tissue on me but you'll find that if you're lifting it off and you can see that I'm flicking it down with my wrist you'll take off a lot more watercolour than the brush will you do have to be careful you'll get quite a crisp edge if you do get a crisp edge and you want it to just fluff up you can get your water bottle and spray it and that will smooth out any edges it really depends on how light you want the sections to be up here it's really quite white so I'm pressing a lot harder because you've got that sunlight coming down and then there's like a few speckly bits around here I'm going to spray that just to soften it out now I'm going to use my other brush, my pointy tape brush, just to pick up and target a little bit of colour. So you see how dark it's going to be around here? Now I'm going to put some ultramarine and then some of the um, indigo in. See, I'm losing track of what I'm even talking about. Then you just need to tilt and allow the bleeds to gently work their magic. If you're finding it's too harsh, like I said, you just get your bottle. As you see down here, it's a little bit harsh. You can just add a little bit of water in and increase that colour bleed out to sections. But remember, as soon as you do dilute, dilute with water, the light, the colour becomes a lot lighter. So, this is quite stormy. Oh, I'm going to need to build up some serious contrast with these darker clouds. Spray that down, down here, just to dilute that one a little bit more. And you can see it's this game of kind of adding water, adding paint, adding water, taking off a little bit with some tissue to get the highlights, adding more paint. You see how that's not moving much? Just increase the water content onto the paper. And this is really why you need the good quality watercolour paper. You'll find that you can get the paint to move and that the paper doesn't kind of wafer if you have the better quality. And down here I need a little bit more colour so I am going to take a little bit of that and a little bit of that and just bring that in down here for that cloud. Now let's just tilt that and work that in. Right, and then while we've got this bit down here, we need to just wet that down and bring in some of those mountains. So I'm using a little bit of the Payne's Dry, Payne's Dry, Payne's Grey. And because it's wet, it'll dilute and bleed in. Let's get the soft tones I want. Yes. 
back up just bleed that out and you can see how it's running down to the water area let's just put in a little bit of the indigo and spray that out and work that prey now you can see how much this is dispersing because the water is quite intense right, a little bit more Just like so. And now I need to grab a tissue. And you can see that wave. Let's just take that wave out using the tissue. Let's just soften off these dribbles down the bottom. Because, you know, we want to put the water in down there, don't we? Uh, we're going to spray out a little bit more. Oh, we can get a little bit more water mixture into that. Just smooth that out. Now I'm going to leave it just to settle down. I'm going to come in and bring in a much stronger darkness. Once that's settled a little bit more. And let's just take these clouds out real quick. Take a flat headed brush, a little bit of damp water on there, and just take out some of the pigment around the horizon because it's usually quite common for it to collect around there. Smooth that out, give you that cloud coming over. Just take out that with a little bit of tissue so it doesn't run back in. You should be getting this kind of cloud formation, it's quite atmospheric. You can throw more colours into it if you want to. Be careful how many colours you put in there because it can get very mucky. So do think about that. And then start building up down here, this section, where we've got the mountains in the distance. Now already we've got a little bit of, hopefully, wet mountain work that's going on. I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Grey. And bring in a little bit more tone. So it's wet. I've just wet it down a little bit. Let's get on that mountain. It's going to be coming in over here. And I'll bring that across there. Coming up. And it should be bleeding out because of that wetness behind it. If you need to lift any. So say you've gone too dark here. Just dampen your brush, take off the excess water, and work it out into the background. Okay, you can see there I'm getting that mountain come off. There's a little bit more here. Uh, let's just work along here. Sometimes it's easier to put in the harder mountains range, and then you can get a feel for where the other one should be. should have a little bit in here so if I just take a little bit of that Payne's Grey coming up with that mountain that's coming here background and we can build those up a little bit more just gently adding in a bit of pigment at a time get bleeds create atmosphere if you find it's going too dry which you'll see because if you put the brush mark on 
and it doesn't bleed, then you know it's going to dry. You can see here, as soon as I put it on, it's starting to swoosh out. Now I've got this down here, white wave. So let's just take it for a little bit so I can get that wave in. And just put the colour up behind it. Colour coming down. And it all very loose, just bleeding into one another. Don't try and control it too much or I'll lose the spontaneous nature and the atmosphere. Right, now at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that to dry so that I can then start doing the rocks down here and then I'll come back and I'll fine tune a few bits here. Well, before I do that I can just see that I need a little bit more indigo shadow just working up here. It's kind of lost it. Still fairly wet, but if I find it gets a little bit hard, just add in that water and just throw in a little bit of shadow underneath that storm cloud to exaggerate its shape. And you might find that you want to do the same with a few of the others over here. It's all about building tonal contrast. Right, so I've allowed this just to dry off a bit um, and that means I can work down here on the foreground and the rocks and also bring up a little bit more sharper detail around the mountain range. I've still got my colours here, it's exactly the same colours. So, um, fresh water and a clean brush and what I'm looking at doing is um, I've got a little bit of burnt, I think, hmm, she says, should I go for which one? No. Let's go light to dark, okay, so a little bit of light red. Let's put that in there, uh, look at where our rocks, because I'm kind of looking at where the light is hitting the rocks, so a little bit more water, uh, hold my brush towards the end, being quite free, then let's get a little bit of the burnt, um, um, burnt sienna, just got a little bit more of an orangey twang. And remember that when you're doing any colour mixing, oranges will bring things optically closer to the viewer. While um, blues will shift, well blues and purples will shift it back. I'm going to grab now some burnt umber. And put that in. And I'm being quite free, I'm just going along with it on the bottom looking at where I need a bit of darker tone and I'm going to put in a little bit of my indigo which will just give me some really strong hits of dark shadow Well, that's just drying off a bit because it's all about timing this. We've got to go back in and just crisp up these mountains, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of water on a pointed brush and I'll work up some of the dark. So I'm going to put in the mountain shape that I want. That I'm going to be working on and the water will keep the boundary. 
Now I do want some of this blurred out so I'm not doing loads, I'm going to keep some of this poking through. That's the trick here is not to overwork it. So it's really nice, it's looking really lively at the moment, it needs, like I said, just to keep building up these darker tone areas. So, really using those strong darks, keeping very ruggedy kind of lines with your brush. Right, so hopefully you've really enjoyed that. You can see how I've built up the colours. A lot of this is using wet into wet, relinquishing control of the paint and allowing it to move around freely and being quite organic in the results. Um, it's, it's quite a nice technique. It's not about kind of accurate painting. It's more looking at tone and highlight and colour and how they all interwork together. Uh, and using kind of less linear more shape marks if that makes sense i hope that makes sense okay well i'll see you next week have fun go and have a play around and see what you can get done see you next time